So seven five, we learned about adding, subtracting, multiplying by a scalar, and then multiplying two matrices together. So the rule for adding, subtracting is that they have to have what? The same, the same dimension. So exactly the same dimensions. You can't add a two by three to a three by two, right? They have to be the same dimensions. And then the rule when you're multiplying is what? Which numbers have to match? The inner two and then the outer two is the result, right? But for a scalar like 1 and 2, it totally doesn't matter, right? The scalar you can do for anything. So if I multiply 2 in here, I'd get negative 6, 10, 14, and 8. And then if I did negative 3 times B, I'd get 9, negative 18, negative 6, and positive 3. Then, like we just said, if we go to do the next ones, first of all, I would make sure that I could continue on and do the whole thing before I, like, for number four, like, before I do the scalar on A, I'd make sure I could do the second part, too. So, three says A plus B. I literally just add first and first, so negative three and negative three is negative six. Then I add second and second, that's 11. Then I add first row, for, I mean, sorry, second row, first column, seven and two, which is nine, and then four and negative one, which would be three. Then comes 2a minus 3a, and that's not a typo. You can combine the same. Um, you could have just done even a plus a or a minus a. You don't even have to do the scalar first. But this time, and there's a scalar multiple on there. So I want to first take 2 and distribute it into a. So I would get negative 6, 10, 14, 8. Then I'm going to subtract, so I'm going to distribute in a positive 3. And I get negative 9, 15, 21, and 12. If I had subtracted, if I had distributed in a negative 3, that's fine. It just becomes addition at that point. So now I'm going to take and add negative 6, or sorry, subtract. Negative 6 minus a negative 9 becomes negative 6 plus 9, which is 3. 10 minus 15, which is negative 5. 14 minus 21, which is negative 7. And 8 minus 12, which is negative 4. So just be really careful with your signs. And I know you guys, you're super smart. You think you don't need to write things out and then that's when silly mistakes are made. So make sure that you're writing this stuff out. If you go straight to an answer and you miss the sign or you miss um, you know, adding or doing something silly in your head and you lose the credit for that whole question because you didn't do any work, that's a shame. Okay, then A times B. So A is a two by two and B is a two by two. The inner two match, which means the outer two, they can be done, and the outer two is going to be the result. So I'm going to get a two by two as my answer. This first cell is row one, column one. So I'm going to multiply row one by column one, one pair at a time. So negative three times negative three plus five times two. And I get nine plus 10 or 19. Then I do row one, column two, because that's the next cell's name. And I get negative three times six plus five times negative one. So I get negative, bless you, negative 18 minus five or negative 23. Then I go row two, column one. So now I'm in row two, column one, and that's seven times negative three plus four times two, or negative 21 plus eight, which is negative 13. And then last one is row two, column two. So row two, column two, and that's seven times six plus four times negative one, 42 minus four, which is 38. So my ending matrix is 19, negative 23, negative 13, 38. Questions on adding, subtracting, scalar, or multiplying? Everybody's good? All right, so inverse is what we're going to talk today. 7, 6 is actually called the inverse of a square matrix. So a square matrix is one that has the same number of rows as columns. So we can do the inverse of a 2 by 2 and a 3 by 3. We're going to stop there, but we will do the inverse of a 2 by 2 and a 3 by 3. Square, again, meaning same dimensions, same rows as columns, okay? 
So first we're gonna see how to test for an inverse and then we're gonna see how to find an inverse and there's more than one way. I'm gonna teach you both ways. The inverse of a matrix, okay, that says let A be an N by N, which is your rows by columns matrix, if there exists an N by N matrix A to the negative one, which is your A to the inverse, such that A times A to the negative one is called I sub N, which is actually the pattern that we use for Gauss Jordan. So if I take two matrices and I multiply them together and I get one, zero, zero, one, then these are inverses of each other. If it's a three by three and I take them and multiply them together, I get one, zero, zero, one, or zero, one, zero, 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 one. Again, the pattern of the variable part of Gauss Jordan or the reduced row echelon. So if I multiply a matrix by its inverse, this is the result. And so this is how we will confirm that something is an inverse or check to see that something's an inverse. This is not how we find it, but this is how it is. And then this is how you'll denote a to the negative one is how you denote an inverse. And on your calculator, that's how you find the inverse of your matrix, which we'll do in a little bit. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is show it, sorry, if we're showing that B is an inverse of A, then like we just said, A times B and B times A would result in one, zero, zero, one. You have to do both. So if the first one doesn't work, then it's no. But if the first one works, you have to switch the order and do it again because A times B is not necessarily the same thing as B times A. If they're inverses, it is. But if they're not, it will be different. All right, so this says show that B is the inverse of A. So I'm gonna do A times B, and then I'm gonna repeat the whole process and do B times A, and both times I'm looking for a result of one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. So these are two by twos, which is what my answer is gonna be, a two by two. Row one, column one, row one, column one, and I get two times negative one plus negative one times three, negative two plus three, which is one. Then I go row one, column two. Two times negative one plus negative one times two, which is negative two plus two, which is zero. Then I go row two, column one, and I get negative three times one, negative one, sorry, plus one times negative three, and I get three minus three, which is zero and then row two, column two, negative three times negative one plus one times negative two, which is three minus two, and that's one. So A, B works. A, B gives me that one, zero, zero, one, and this time it told you that B was the inverse, so your work is your answer. If it didn't say show, and it said is it, then you'd be testing this out, and it could be a yes or no. All right, now I've got to do BA. So for me, my brain likes to work left to right. I rewrite the matrix that I want on the right, on the right. You don't have to do this. But for me, it helps because I know I go row then column. So now again, it's a two by two. Row one, column one, negative one times two is negative two, plus negative one times three is three, and that's one. Row one, column two, negative one times negative one is one. Negative one times one is negative one. That's a zero. Row two, column one, negative three times two is negative six. Negative two times negative three is positive six. And the last one, row two, column two, negative three times negative one is three. And negative two times positive one is negative two. So I'm okay if you do at least this, okay? Obviously, if you write it out, you're gonna be more careful. But if, you can, if you're gonna just go there, you, you can. If you are showing that it's an inverse, though, you can't just write one, zero, zero, one. Like that's the, I know that that's the answer. You've gotta show some work to get you there. So their questions could be like this. Show it's the inverse and what your work is the answer. Or it could be, is B the inverse to A? And for that one, you're looking for the pattern to happen both times. If it doesn't happen both times, it's a no. Question so far. All right, this one says show B is the inverse of A. What's different? 
scalar. There's a scalar this time. So I'm gonna distribute that one half in first. I'd get negative two, one. I'd get three halves, negative one half. Do you know where to go from there? Do I need to work this one out? Hmm? Work it out? Okay, so then A is this one, and this is now B. So I'm gonna do A times B, two by two. Row one, column one, so negative two plus three over two times two, which is three, and that's one. Row one, column two. One times one is one. Two times negative one half is negative one. That's zero. Row two, column one. Three times negative two, negative six. And then four times three over two. Two goes into four twice. Two times three is positive six. And then row two, column two. Two times three is three. Negative one half times four is negative two, and there's the one. So the pattern worked like it's supposed to. Now I gotta switch, switch and do the B times A. So I'm gonna rewrite A again because I like the left to right for my brain. You don't need to. Now I'm gonna do row one, column one. Negative two plus three. That's one. Row one, column two, negative four plus four, that's zero. Row two, column one, three halves minus three halves, that's zero. And row two, column two, three minus two, which is one. So obviously a lot of application of multiplication is gonna happen in this chapter, I mean in this section. It's good because it forces you to review it. But you definitely need that skill. Questions on that one? So again, it could say show that it's the inverse and your work of the 1001 is your proof. It could say is it the inverse and you're looking to see if the pattern happens twice. If it doesn't happen twice, it'd be no. If it does happen, it's okay. We're not gonna do this one, if, I hope we're okay, because I'm gonna get to the next part, and if I have time, I'll go back to it. But what's the difference? And now it's a three by three, so it's just a lot more work, okay? So I would do A times B, and this time it's gonna be a three by three. So we'll fill a couple columns, but then I'm gonna stop to go to what we have to do next. This one would be row one, column one. So this whole row times this whole row is two times one, which is two plus negative 17 times two, which is negative 34, plus 11 times three, which is 33. And I get negative 32 plus 33, which is one. I'll do that first row with you. Row one now, column two. So two times one, which is two, negative 17 times four, which is negative 68, and 11 times six, which is 66. And I get negative 66 plus 66, which is zero. <coughs> then row one, column three, two times two, which is four, negative 17 times three, which is 51, 11 times negative five, negative 55, and I get 55 minus 55, which is zero. The next row, I will end up with the pattern 0, 1, 0, and the last row, 0, 0, 1. Because it says show that, again, I know that's the pattern I'm going to get. The work's going to be your answer. And after you do A times B, you got to go back and do B times A. And again, get 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Probably the show is not a test question but you can use this to check the answers that we're about to do, okay? So we're gonna now find the inverse, and with extra time, the way you check your inverse is doing what we just did. Make sense? Yeah, okay. All right, so to find the inverse, for a two by two, there's two methods. I'm gonna teach you this way first because this works for both two by twos and three by threes, but then I'm gonna show you a shortcut for two by two. It does not work for a three by three though. 
So if you have a two by two or a three by two, I mean a three by three, and you wanna find the inverse, then you're gonna write the original matrix on the left-hand side. So let me, so if I had one, two, three, four as my original matrix, I write it just the way that it is. But then I put the little dots in between and I write to the right of it what I would want my result to be had I multiplied it by its inverse, which is one, zero, zero, one. So again, you would write the original matrix on the left and you would write what result you want on the right. Now you're gonna use row operations like we did from Gosh Jordan and Gaussian elimination to change the left side of this to become the right side of this. So if I wanted to have a zero, I mean one in that top left corner, it's already there, but if I wanna put a zero here, how do I do that? Negative three times row one plus row two. The difference is it's gotta get multiplied by all four spots in the, in the top row. So it'd be negative three, negative six, negative three, zero, plus three, four, zero, one. That's still Friday's schedule. Zero, negative two, negative three, one, and that would take the place of row two. Now I want a, I already have the zero here, right? So I'm gonna go here. Actually, I would go here. If I want a zero where that positive two is, how could I get it? How could I get a zero here? Just add the two rows. So row one plus row two would give me one, zero, four, one. That's gonna play, take the place of row one. Now I'm here. And the last thing I need is a one where that negative two is. How do I do that? Multiply by negative one half. So I get one, zero, four, one, zero, one, negative three halves and negative one half. Now the left side is what I want it to be and the right side is my inverse. So if you go back to the question that we just stole this from, that was what B is after we multiplied that one half in. So again, I'll teach you another method for a two by two. So then when you like check it, you just have to like multiply by Yeah, so if I, want, if I had extra time and I wanted to check it, I would multiply this times the original one and see that it gives me the one zero zero one. That is for two by two, which again, I'm gonna show you a shortcut. The unfortunate part is that a three by three, the shortcut doesn't work. So if I had a three by three with these numbers, then I do the dots in between and on the right, I do zero, one, zero, 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 one, and oops, zero, one, zero, 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 one. And I work through the row operations to make the left side equal the right side, okay? Which we'll do an example of, but that's the idea behind it. Does that make sense? Yes, again, I'll show you a shortcut for a two by two, but it doesn't work for a three by three. All right, so let's try this with the method that we're talking about now. I need the, le the left side of this to stay what it is, the right side to become one, zero, zero, one. Then three row one plus row two. Yeah, okay. Then uh, negative, well, I would make the bottom one the negative one. Negative times row two. Nope, I would have done the other way around. Row one plus row two.
Yeah, but you're gonna, I can get rid of the negative too. So this becomes one, one. Change the signs there by multiplying by negative one. And then multiply by negative two. And there's my inverse. Questions on that one. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna type in my matrix, right? So I gotta go second matrix, I go over to edit. This is a two by two, so I made it a two by two, and then I typed in my matrix. Matrix two, negative one, negative three, negative one, I'm positive one, sorry. And then second quick, get back out of that screen. And remember the matrix is actually on the X negative one button, that's the inverse button. So I go second matrix and I pull up the name by just clicking on A, and then I hit that same button but not second it. And I do the negative one, and then you hit enter, and it's gonna give you what your answer should have been, okay? So good for checking, and there's a question on the homework that actually says find it that way. Make sure you take a picture of that once you do that, okay? You won't have your graphing calculators on the test though. This is what I want to teach you. Okay, and then we'll go back to it. So here's the shortcut for a two by two. It's actually doing something called the determinant, which we're gonna learn about tomorrow. I don't know why your book flips these order, but it does, okay? The determinant is found on a two by two matrix by multiplying these two numbers together and then subtracting from it the product of these two numbers. So it's A times D minus C times B. So if I had one, two, three, four, then I would do four times one minus three times two. And I get negative two. Then as long as that's not zero, because otherwise it ruins the whole thing, you can take that and put it under one. So this would then be negative one half and multiply it by notice that this matrix has changed from this. You swap the A and D, so those two numbers change location. If I had done it based on this one, it'd be four here, one here. And you change the signs on B and C. So two stays where it is, but becomes a negative two. Three stays where it is, but becomes a negative three. And then you just distribute that scalar in. So I'd get negative two, one, three halves, and negative one half. So you do, again, one over what's called the determinant, which is B, D times A minus C times B. And then distribute that in after you switch the positions of A and D and you change the signs on B and C. So one of the very first years I taught this, I like drew, I just try to like say, you have to go this to this and someone's like, oh, it's like a Jesus fish. And I was like, okay, if that helps you remember what it is. Yeah, sure, it looks like a Jesus fish. And then she was like, if you give it an I, you remember to do the minus. So if you've got one, two, three, four, and you want to find the determinant of it, then you can draw yourself a little fish. You do the bottom right to top left first minus the bottom left to top right. Did I say that wrong? Bottom right to top left first. I don't know if I said that. Minus bottom left to top right. That's the order you do it in, okay? Obviously, when you're multiplying four times one and one times four, that order doesn't matter. But what is important is that you subtract the next one. We would have done the last time, but I'm gonna do it the easier way. So I'm gonna do, first of all, that little determinant, which is three by five minus two times negative two. And I get 15 minus a negative two, which becomes plus four. And that becomes 19, or minus two times negative two. So 19 is the number that's going in the denominator of what my scalar is. So this is one over 19 times, now I switch the locations on the A and the D. So three and five switch location. 
and I change the sign on the other two. So this negative two becomes a positive two. This positive two becomes a negative two. And then you just distribute it in. So I'd get three over 19, two over 19, negative two over 19, and five over 19. Correct. Yep. Top left, bottom right actually physically move. And then the other two, they change the signs, they don't stop. So this is a three by three. This again, you can't do a shortcut on. Okay, so it doesn't work like the other one with the with the determinant. You can't do it this way. This you have to go full out. So you have to say that this should equal one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. And then I have to go through the row operation pr process to make sure I get it there. So if I wanted to get a one in this top spot to make my life easier moving forward, what's one way I could do that? I could do negative one, row one, plus row two. Do we see that? Negative one row one plus row two. Would that give me a one? Yeah. So I would do negative two, negative three, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, and add it to three, three, one, zero, one, zero. And that's going to, we want that to take the place of row one. which we just got really, really lucky because we got two other zeros. I did not plan that out. Okay, then I want a zero here where this three is. How could I get that? Okay, negative three, row one plus row two. Then I want a zero where the two is. How do I do that? Negative two, row one plus row three. Now I want a zero here. No, not there, sorry. I want a zero here. I want a zero here. Which one's gonna be easier to get? The one. So I'm gonna do that one before I try for the four. So I could do negative one row three plus row two. Now I just need a zero here, so I can do four 
times row two plus row three. Oh, I did the wrong one, sorry. I'm going to change these signs. Now the left side is in the pattern I want it to be, which means the right side has become the inverse. So the good news is there's only one on the homework that's like that, but there is one on the homework that's like that that does not say use a calculator. One says use a calculator, solve it. You could literally use your calculator, to solve it. One is this. So you gotta make sure you're showing all that work, okay? I don't care if you use the calculator to like figure out what your answer should be so you know if you're on the right track. That's totally fine by me, but you gotta work, walk through that process, which means it's a lot of work. So there's two two by twos um, that you can use either method at the end. It actually suggests the short method. Obviously, if I had a choice, I would do a shortcut. And then there's a three by three, and then there's one with a uh, with the calculator. So don't freak yourself out. Use a calculator. Make your life easy on yourself. Questions on anything inverse related? Okay. All right.